Quite some time now has passed since Nintendo officially pulled the plug on the Wii U and 3DS. Now that both of these consoles just sit on shelves with no functionality other than being able to play games you physically own, the topic of modding these consoles is continuously brought up in like any situation. But for good reason though. If you own a 3DS and you still haven't modded it, hopefully this video can somehow encourage you to do so because honestly, much like the Wii, having both of these consoles modded is probably one of the best things you can do if you're a Nintendo fan. It's well known already that trying to play retro Nintendo games without having the funds to do so is kinda impossible. In a time where the retro market is in a chokehold by flippers and resellers trying to gain a following and make a living by doing so, trying to buy old games second hand is not a very good financial decision. And this is kinda more aimed towards the younger Nintendo fans that aren't really able to have a job yet. Because surprisingly enough, there are still a ton of kids that own 3DSs who love talking about consoles and video games that are like way older than them. With the help of the internet, some patience, and a few extra items, your boring old offline consoles can become some of your best friends when it comes to retro gaming. Now for this video, I'm going to mainly focus on the 3DS as I am way more familiar with this little guy, but I'll bring up the Wii U every now and then. So what are some main reasons to mod your 3DS? There are three main topics I want to cover. Portability, emulation slash preservation, and customization. In order, let's start with portability. I know saying the first reason to mod your 3DS because it's portable is a little bit weird to think about, but trust me, all of these reasons align with each other. Since technically the 3DS is Nintendo's most recent handheld, there's really nothing else with this much power in it. As production of the 3DS family ended in 2020, the only sole reason Nintendo thrives today is because of the Switch. But let me just say it, when it comes to portability, carrying around a 3DS is so much better than carrying around this wonder of a tablet. I've gone on quite a few trips in the past where the decision to bring either my Switch or my 3DS has always had me at a crossroads. No matter what though, I tend to always just take my 3DS because it's literally so much more portable. I suppose a small added bonus to this would be to mention Street Pass, where if someone else is carrying their 3DS on them and you just so happen to be in the same proximity, then both systems transfer street pass data locally and you can have someone new show up in your street pass me plaza which is really cool in my opinion this actually happened to me whenever i took my 3ds to japan last year and let's just say that seeing this green led flash was way more enjoyable rather than having my switch just you know sitting back at the hotel but with so many places you can take your 3ds comes the power to play anything that you want on your 3DS. Well, not anything, but there's still a lot of things you can do with a 3DS in terms of emulation. Now, I want to mention preservation as well right here because in no way am I saying that you should pirate any media you do not own as that would be illegal. Apps that have possibly every game you can think of, such as H-Shop and Ghost eShop, are really convenient but you should only be dumping games that you physically own because doing otherwise is illegal. The eShop alone before it shut down had a number of titles from many different systems. These include the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, the NES, the Super Nintendo, Sega Game Gear, and a newer form known as 3D Classics where they just kind of revamped old retro titles to have 3D features. It was kind of cool, but it was also kind of executed in a weird way. Of course, sadly, now that the 3DS eShop has shut down, you can't really buy these games, but there are still ways you can play many other games that weren't eShop titles. You just gotta scour the internet a little bit and know where to look. But think about that for a second. Being able to play almost everything from the Game Boy family, a few home consoles, and even older arcade machines all on your 3DS allows you to do so much with it. Small side note as well, the app RetroArc allows you the use of playing other retro consoles such as the Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1, but the 3DS kind of struggles in doing so, so while it is possible, it's probably not the best gaming experience for these consoles. Not to mention, once again, any 3DS game you could ever want to play at your fingertips thanks to these two guys right here. I usually get quite a few questions asking if modding a DSi is worth just as much as modding a 3DS. In a way, I can feel like this question can be compared to modding a Wii versus a Wii U. Modding the Wii U's predecessor is very convenient when it comes to playing all these retro games, but there's a few reasons why I'd actually choose a Wii U over a normal Wii. 
For one, there's an extra library you're able to play. Two, having the capability of connecting an HDMI cable makes it way better than buying one of those cheap converter boxes or plugs that, what is it, Wii to HDMI, wh whatever it is. Yeah, no thank you. And three, the Wii U basically has a Wii emulator, so it's technically like a super Wii. Comparing a DSi to a 3DS can be looked at in the same light. You've got the entire 3DS library of games and apps, plus you can pretty much play any DS game you want just on a bigger screen. As well as that, some mods allow you to change DS game settings, making the gameplay look way better by upscaling pixels and giving you a more enjoyable visual experience. Which leads me into my third reason for modding your 3DS. Customization. Now this is where the community tends to get really creative. Because although you can pretty much unlock any of the official 3DS wallpapers that Nintendo released throughout its lifespan, and don't get me wrong, I really do like these a lot, for instance, the Puppet Mario and Princess Peach one is my favorite, there is literally an entire website dedicated to any background that you'd want. Let's just think of custom Zelda wallpaper, they've got it, custom anime wallpaper, they've got it, Hatsune Miku, yup. Hello Kitty? Yup. Memes? Sadly, you, you get the point. Modding your 3DS allows for so many more options even past your home menu screen. For instance, if you'd like to have a custom splash screen, you could do that. Oh no, I dropped my 3DS and now the top screen is broken. Oh look at that, my 3DS is running old software from the 90s. John Deere? John Cena? On top of the custom splash screens, there's the ability to have custom badges as well. Remember the badge arcade? Yeah, well that shut down pretty much with everything else. With these custom badges, you're pretty much able to do whatever you'd want, organize however you want, just anything that's on your home screen. I know the conversation of modding your 3DS can get a bit annoying and redundant to hear, but I genuinely feel like modding your 3DS is a great option for those that don't really have the funds to go out and splurge on old retro games. Here are some frequent topics that get thrown around as to why people don't want to mod their 3DS. I tend to hear from folks that they want to keep their childhood 3DS in its default state because that's just what nostalgia is telling them to do. And that's totally fine, my original childhood 3DS will never reach that point because this was the console I loved playing on as a kid. I also tend to hear people say that they don't want to mod their 3DS because they want to collect their games physically. And that's totally fine too, I have a ton of games downloaded on my 3DS's SD card, but I also like to buy games physically because I like to save on an actual cartridge. Being able to hold your save data and transfer it to different consoles is pretty nice sometimes. And lastly, the one that I tend to struggle with personally is that people don't want to mod their 3DS because it's a bit overwhelming. Overall, all I really have to say is whether you plan on modding your 3DS or you don't plan on modding it, you shouldn't go knocking down other people depending on what their opinion is on it. Play games how you want to play them, customize your system however you want to, because at the end of the day, honestly, it's all about just finding happiness in the consoles that you own and you love to play.